Hello and welcome to today's edition of the Danielle Daily Show. I am your host, Danielle Watson. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I have a really interesting topic for us to talk about today. This is something that came up in my Facebook feed first thing this morning, and it really, really tugged at my heartstrings. And so I wanted to share it with you. I'll tell you a little bit about how I came across this and why it tugged at my heartstrings. I'll have today's note to self for you. You know, today's topic is going to be just a little bit more serious than we normally have on the Danielle Daily Show. I usually try to keep the Danielle Daily Show really lighthearted, and today we will definitely be on a positive note, but I wanted to share something with you that really tugged at my heartstrings this morning. And I wanted to do that because, you know, not every day of life is sunshine and roses. We all go through difficult times. We all have thoughts that are less than positive, And we all meet challenges in our life that cause us to doubt ourselves. And so this morning, when I opened up my Facebook feed, which I usually do while I'm having tea in the morning, not long after I have woken up, uh, I noticed that one of my Facebook friends, I am getting hearts, thank you so much, who's here, let me know, go ahead and type your name into the comments so I can say hello. So as soon as I opened up my feed this morning while I was sipping my tea, one of my Facebook friends had written a poem. And I, I was just like, wow, when I read this poem, and I'm going to read it to you, I actually received his permission to read the poem to you. And it just, it really tugged at my heartstrings and it got me thinking about wanting to talk about this topic and maybe take things in a, just a little bit more serious direction than we normally do here on the Danielle Daily Show. So I'm going to read you his very, very brief poem and then we'll talk a little bit about it and then I will give you today's note to self. So this poem was written by a friend of mine. He's a Facebook friend we've met once in person. You know, I didn't actually ask if I could use his name, so I'm not going to give you his name, but he is a young man and he He's very inspiring and a person with an enormous heart. And I, I really hope that, that this poem will speak to a part of you as well and that you'll join me in, in you know, just sending him uplifting thoughts because he's, he's been in a really down place and I know we've all been there. So here is what he wrote and this is what I read. His poem says, I am so afraid of what you have to say because I am quiet now and silence gives you space. Let me read it to you one more time. He wrote, I'm so afraid of what you have to say because I'm quiet now and silence gives you space. And as soon as I read that, I just, I felt it tug at my heart. I felt my heart aching for him and I knew that he was in a really tough spot and that he was feeling really down and it got me thinking about how in the silence, in those quiet moments at night or when we find ourselves alone, those thoughts in our head start to spin and I, I asked him if this was about you know the thoughts in his head and he said yes. And it made me think about, it looks like Elena says, wow, tug some strings for me too. Yeah, it's a really powerful poem. I think so many of us have experienced this, right, where we're afraid of our own minds. We're afraid of the thoughts that we have in our head. We're afraid to slow down or to be quiet or to be silent or to let up because in those quiet moments, those, those, those thoughts and judgments about ourselves and things like that, they start to surface. And what I wanted what I wanted to say is that, you know, I understand that sometimes the the most cruel and frightening and violent place in the universe is is in our own mind, right? It's in our own head. It's in the space between our ears. I don't know about you, but in my life, the things that I have conjured in my mind and the mean things that I have said about myself are far worse than anything anyone has ever said to me. And the, the catastrophic scenarios I've imagined for my life are far worse than anything that has ever actually happened. And it's, it's in our minds that we 
we shape how we are going to decide about the things that happen in our life. So our thoughts inform our decisions about life and our decisions about life inform how we're going to act and how we act creates our life. Like our life is created from a series of thoughts and experiences and actions. And so I just wanted to point out that when we are having these kinds of thoughts that are really bringing us down, the kinds of thoughts that make us feel like, you know, life is not life is not for us, that life is against us or that things bad things are happening to us or that we're not good enough. When we're having those sorts of thoughts, we start to believe them. We start to believe them and we start making decisions based on those thoughts. And when we make decisions based on those thoughts, we start acting as if those thoughts are true. And then life starts reflecting back to us that those things are true. But what I want to point out is life reflects back to us that those thoughts are true because we're acting on them, not necessarily because they are true. So let me break that down just a little bit more. So if we change our thoughts, if we start having different sorts of more positive thoughts, more loving thoughts about ourselves, if we do that, we'll start making different decisions. And when we start making different kinds of decisions, we start taking different sorts of actions. And when we take different sorts of actions, life will reflect something different back at us. So when we get into this place of thinking these things about ourselves that make us feel down, it seems like the world is, is telling us that, that it's true, that we're bad, or we're not good enough, or we're not loved, or it's never going to get better. But if we can somehow find a way to start thinking that maybe it's going to be okay, and maybe we are a good person, and maybe we are lovable, and maybe we have done some good things in life. If we can focus on those, even if we can't do it all the time, even if we just do it for just a few minutes a day, we'll start making different decisions about how we're going to behave. And when we do that, life will start to show us that we are lovable and that people like us and that it is going to get better. And I, I just want to point that out because we start to believe that these thoughts are true because the world seems to reflect back to us that they are. But we can change what we're thinking and the world will start to reflect back something else. So we really have the ability to change our experience by changing the thoughts that we think. And that is something that I have worked a lifetime on. I have 37 years of experience doing this, trying to work in my own mind into thinking different thoughts and thinking thoughts that are more supportive and being my own cheerleader and loving myself. Thank you so much for the heart. That's awesome. And there are so many books out there that you guys can utilize if that's something that you want to do. If you just do a, a Google search for changing your thoughts, there are so many resources for doing that. So if you are Find, ever finding yourself in a place where you feel really down, where you feel like you know things things are just not not how you'd like them to be. There are so many ways that you can change that, and one of the ways is to think better thoughts about yourself. So Elena says, definitely take someone special to turn it into be such a beautiful special and beautiful lesson. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Elena. You know, I the poem moved me so much, and it just got me thinking that there are so many of us out there who find ourselves in this place and we don't live in that place all the time, but we do find ourselves there. And you know, how do we get out of it? It feels like, it feels like we're never, we're never going to move out of that. So like I said, there are so many books out there that will teach you different ways of, of changing your mind. And I have just a little exercise that you can use if you find it useful. It's something that I use sometimes and Try it out, see if it helps you shift your mindset a little bit and to maybe say some gentler, kinder things to yourself. So all it is, is imagine that somebody you love 
more than anything in the world. And if there's no human you can love, think of a four-legged friend or a feathered friend that you can love, right? Imagine that this someone who you love more than anything in the world or an animal that you love more than anything in the world came to you with tears in their eyes and told you that they were thinking whatever it is that you're thinking about yourself or whatever it is that you're thinking about life. Imagine they came to you saying those same things and imagine what you would say back to them. And I think it's so interesting that we often know exactly what it is we need to hear, but when we think about it from a perspective of saying it to somebody else, that becomes so much clearer and much more apparent what it, what it is that we need to do. And it's so much easier to recognize that, that what we're thinking just isn't true, right? If, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I'm a terrible person, and you imagine the person you love most in the world coming to you and saying, I'm a terrible person, you would look at them and you would say, that's ridiculous. It's, you're not a terrible person. You might have done something wrong, but you are not a terrible person. Eric says, hello, thank you for joining me. So earlier I was reading a poem that I found in my Facebook feed this morning, one that really tugged at my heartstrings. I might read it again before we go, but it was from one of my friends who was in a, you know, a very low place and I was just giving some tips on how to shift out of thinking that way so that we start behaving in a different way, so that we start taking different actions so that the world around us can start reflecting something different back to us, which makes it easier to feel better. So let me just look at um, today's note to self. I want to I want to read this to you and then I will read you my friend's poem again because like I said It's very short, but it was very moving And I think that so many of us have found our, ourselves there and and he just expressed it so beautifully And then I'd like you to think about you know using what I said about getting outside of your own head Imagining somebody you care about so much came to you with those same thoughts that you're having about yourself and how you would respond to those thoughts, okay? So here's today's note to self. And it just says, Dear self, you will always make mistakes and you will always be lovable. And then I signed it, love me. So let me read that to you again in case you're writing down today's note to self. I love it when you guys write down the note to self. It feels so good to know that you found it useful, that you're using it to make changes in your own thoughts and your behaviors and the way you act and that your life is changing because of it. That just, it makes me feel so good. So here it is one more time. Dear self, you will always make mistakes and you will always be lovable. So that is the note to self. In case you missed the poem my friend wrote, I'll read it to you again just quickly here. It's so short. He said, I'm so afraid of what you have to say because I am quiet now and silence gives you space. And like I said, the scariest, most violent, cruel place in the universe is sometimes inside our own minds. And it doesn't have to be that way. We can think differently about ourselves, and one of the tools that you can use to do that is just to imagine someone else coming to you with those same thoughts and imagining how you would respond to them. So I really hope that was helpful. I know today's topic was quite a bit heavier than normal, but I really feel like, you know, Life isn't always sunshine and roses and rainbows, and none of us has all the answers. I certainly don't have all the answers, but we're just, we're doing the best we can, right? We're just, we're learning, we're growing, we're doing the best we can. And if there's anything that I can do to help you to learn, to grow, to make life a little bit better, a little bit sweeter, a little bit happier, I would love to know. Please feel free to, to leave me a comment in the broadcast or after in the recording. Feel free to message me privately. Eric says, it's like trying to do a 360 or view something from someone else's shoes. You're exactly right. Hard to do, but very powerful. I don't know, I mean, how, is it really that hard to do? Is it really hard to, Think of somebody else coming to you with the same thoughts. I know it is hard to get out of our own heads, but I, I think we can all very easily imagine somebody we love coming to us with a problem. And 
that exercise of taking our problem outside of ourselves gives us a different perspective on it that makes it so much easier to sort of shift how we're thinking about things. It just, it gives us that little bit of space that allows us to think, you know, maybe this isn't true, or maybe things are not as bad as they seem, or maybe I am actually being way too hard on myself, which is often the case. Eric says, I think it's hard to understand someone else's issue if you can't relate to then understand why they view things the way they do. That, that can absolutely be true. Sometimes it is hard. But because it's our own issue that we're sort of projecting outward onto somebody else, I think that's what makes it easier for us to use this exercise because we're taking something that we are, that we do have an issue with and we're imagining that somebody else has the issue and then thinking about how we would deal with it. So I think that that will be a really useful, simple to use exercise. Let me know if you guys use it. Let me know if it's helpful to you. I'll read you the note, self, note to self one more time. Remember, I will be back here again with the show at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I'm here every single weekday. You can find me here. Connect with me on Instagram, connect with me on Twitter, connect with me through the the email that I send out to the tribe, connect with me on YouTube. I love to hear you guys. I love to help you guys. Let me know what you need anytime. So here's the note to self one last time before I go. It says, dear self, you will always make mistakes and you will always be lovable. So remember, just because you are not the perfect person, just because you make mistakes does not mean that you are not amazing and that you are not lovable. Don't ever let yourself forget that. All right, like I said, I'll see you guys back here again tomorrow. I love each and every one of you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you for the last minute thumbs ups. So much appreciation to each and every one of you. Don't forget, let me know what you need and I'll see you back here again tomorrow. All right, love you guys, bye.